Hello and welcome to the Flix Forum podcast, where each episode we go back and we look at a Netflix original film in the order of release. This episode we have Netflix 336th film from 2021. It's the Indian drama called The White Tiger. This one is directed by Raman Barani and stars Adash Gurav, Priyanka Chopra Jonas, and Rajkumar Rao. I'm Jesse and I'm your host. As always, thanks for coming along on this journey with me as we make our way through the 2021 Netflix original films. Uh, we will spoil this film as we go. So if you haven't quite seen The White Tiger yet and this is sort of sitting on your list to watch, give us a pause and come back a little bit later on because we will spoil this as we go. And we start the show with the fast flicks where we do a quick little summary of what the film's all about. So this one for me, in a one-liner, this is the story of a man who uses his wit to go from rags to riches. It's not quite the sort of Cinderella sort of uh, romantic sort of story. This one's got quite a lot of... Uh, interesting uh themes and ideas in it so uh let's go with it Let, let's talk about how this one ended up on netflix what's the story behind this film because it's quite an interesting story i guess to start off with for the first time in quite a while this this film across the world the the direct translation for pretty much every country is the same title which is the white tiger so that's where we're at with, with this the the tagline for this is this sort of gives away a little bit um already but the tagline is based on the new york times best-selling book and then the other tagline is create your fate. So as I sort of said there, this is an adaptation of the book of the same name by Indian author Arvind Adgar. And it was published in 2008 and it did actually win the 40th Booker Prize in the same year. So a very well received novel that this film is based on. I guess I gotta sort of put it out there too. This isn't based on fact. This is a, uh, a fictionalized version of someone in India trying to overcome the odds, I guess, is the best way of putting it. So the producer of the film, which uh, who was Makul Diora, he bought the rights for the adaptation of the novel and Diora chose director Raman Barani, who also happened to be um, a Diga, who was the author of the book. They were college friends um, and he was chosen to helm the film. Barani had read through the rough drafts of the novel years before it was even published with uh, Diora stating he's very dedicated to adapt this into a film. I guess the other interesting fact with this is the actual novel, um, the, the author, Arvind Adiga, he actually dedicated the novel to the director, Raman Barani, before there was even mention of a film. So obviously a very close connection for the director to this uh, story and, and the original novel. Barani added, it's an epic story that required a lot of financing and money and resources to get it made in India. And that wasn't so easy when the novel came out. So he initially sold the distribution rights to Netflix because Barani said that, Netflix had an appetite for global stories for voices that are not typically represented behind a camera or in front of a camera as well. Um, Priyanka Chopra Jonas, we sort of had her in a, a film not too long ago. It was the uh, Rodriguez, Robert Rodriguez film, We Can Be Heroes. Um, and obviously she is a huge sort of star in India. So uh, on her Twitter, which is now known as X, um, you know, she was scrolling through her Twitter one day and she saw this headline that a film adaptation of the novel was in the works. And she automatically said, I need to call my agent about this film. And she wanted to collaborate on it as well because um, she liked the novel and, and then she she eventually served as one of the executive producers of the film uh, alongside Prem Akuraju and Ava Devane, as well as uh, Ken Kaminis. So Chopra said that the book had a profound effect on her and it made her uncomfortable and made her think about a part of the world that people desensitize themselves to. When she first read the book, she said that she was fascinated with the perspective of the narrative and that the story's portrayal of raw ambition and the extent of one's will to achieve one's goals is riveting. So obviously a big connection for her to the novel. Um, while Barani, in adapting the novel, he added and deleted a few sequences and, um, and characters as well, I guess. But the story largely stays faithful to the novel. He said that the hardest part was cutting things out since he loved the book so much. But when I put all of it into the script, he said, it came to 200 pages, which is obviously too much. So Arvind gave me a wealth of gold and cutting it, it just was not easy. Initially, he considered updating the story, the timeline, because obviously the, the novel was set in 2005 and wanted to create more, you know, a more recent setting before abandoning this idea as, as it's a, a period film. And in the making of the script, Barani stated, one of the biggest changes today is that thing in your hand, your mobile phone, this supercomputer. And and in today's world, um, Balram, the, the main protagonist in this film, he wouldn't be writing emails. He'd probably be doing it through video or, or social media or 
Instagram. And, and this is the only second time in his, his career that he adapted a book that he wanted to actually stick to and not make too many changes. Uh, Barani, when casting the film, turned down some established stars for the part of Balram. And he said that he had an opportunity to talk with a lot of actors, stars that you'd know from Bollywood, who are all incredible. But at a certain point, while he was in India, he felt that the lead actor should be from India and preferably unknown. He said it felt, he said he felt that it matched the character and the story of an underdog. Before filming, um, Barani spent months in India, riding local buses, visiting the places that Adiga had written about, and meeting lots of people before eventually meeting Adash Gurav. Um, and Gurav plays our, our main protagonist in this film, and he prepared for his role by living anonymously in this remote village in Jharkhand in India and worked 12 hours a day actually washing plates. So took on the, this role of playing this, uh, this character who, who sort of lived outside the cities quite seriously. Uh, the director said that he didn't want to see a rich, successful actor playing the part of this underclass underdog who was going to do something crazy in the film. And Adash Gurav just blew him away in the audition, and he said that he had this great winning smile. He's very charming, and you like him immediately, but if you don't pay attention and you look at him again, he's got this laser on you, and you don't know what he might do. And he thought that he really needed that duality um, in this character. Principal photography for the film began in October 2019, with the cast and crew being present for the shoot, excluding Jonas, uh, which is interesting because she was obviously involved in another product at the moment, which was for the promotion of the film called The Sky is Pink. And she joined the cast in Delhi on the 2nd of November, 2019. And while shooting the film, actually posted a picture on her own Instagram with this caption saying, it's too hard to shoot here, which was uh, a reference to the, the very uh, climactic conditions and air pollution in the city of Delhi which where the film The White Tiger was mostly filmed um, and it did wrap on the 15th of December 2019. Working with Chopra Jones brings a lot of unique challenges uh, with this film, especially when filming in India because she's so famous that it was almost impossible to shoot with her anywhere outdoors. Most of her scenes in the film are actually like in a car or, or in an interior location. There's this scene of her in the film where she simply leaves a car to enter a shopping mall and this took months of planning to execute apparently. Um, and a scene in which her character is involved in this hit and run accident, it was shot on a road near a stadium so they could actually gate it off away from the public. And they had to digitally remove this gate as well. Uh, if a word had spread that she was shooting a movie nearby, there would be no way to secure the area. The director said that they even brought police in and the police wouldn't be able to stop the crowds that would come uh, while filming. So that's how big a star she is in India. The film, it did premiere at Las Vegas um, at, a, at a premiere um, screening there on the 6th of January, 2021. It did have a limited theatrical release in the United States from the 13th of January, 2021, before being released globally on Netflix from the 22nd of January, 2021. Netflix did report that 27 million households watched the film over its first month and it appeared on the platform's top 10 in 64 countries so uh, pretty well received for on release unfortunately there was a lawsuit which was filed against the makers uh, of the film by a producer called John Hart who cited copyright infringement uh, Hart said that a literary auction agreement was executed between him and the author of the book in March of 2009 and that a part of that was that he had to make it an Oscar-worthy film to be released in Hollywood, which did not materialize, apparently. So the plea was actually rejected by the Delhi High Court because he didn't have any proof um, to the to come to a court uh, within 24 hours of its release. So uh, a little bit of a, an easy escape there, I guess, for the, the creators of this film. As mentioned, this was filmed um, in India, um, in, in parts of Mumbai as well. This, sorry, not Mumbai, Delhi. Um, this was released on Netflix on the 22nd of January, 2021. By the look of things, it in its um, limited theatrical release, it only took $680 worldwide. So not a lot of money worldwide, but Netflix obviously don't really care about those box office mum numbers. The award circuit for this year, it had 17 nominations that it, it didn't win and then seven nominations where it did win. So the biggest nomination I think we've got to acknowledge was that it was uh, nominated for the Best Adapted Screenplay at the 2021 Oscars or the Academy Awards. So that's quite a big nomination uh, for a Netflix film. What are the critics and audiences saying about this film? Pretty positive, pretty positive. Um, Rotten Tomato sits at 92%. That's on 180 reviews. That's 
very fresh. That's certified fresh. Audience a little bit lower, 79%. That's on more than 1,000 ratings on Rotten Tomatoes. That's super high. IMDb, again, very high, a 7.1 out of 10 on 66,000 ratings. On Letterboxd, the film lovers' uh, social media, it sits at a 3.5 out of 5 on a bit of 63,000 ratings. It's been logged by 83,000 people and this actually has a Metacritic score. Metacritic, they use that traffic light system of the green, yellow, and red. It is green for both the critics and audiences. It sits at a 76 out of 100 on 39 critic reviews, and the audience has it a 6.9 out of 10 on 100 reviews too. So what are my early thoughts for this film? This is an enjoyable ride the whole way through. I, I think you know there's some choices with narration and, and non-linear storytelling that probably don't work 100%, but the visuals and performances throughout make this a must-watch film. I, I think this is definitely a, a Netflix film that needs to be consumed. So let's talk, we always talk about the characters. The, the characters, Balram is our main character. This is his story. He's the narrator. He's literally in every scene, and, and it's his story, and it's the character that they want you to root for, and you, they want you to see him succeed. Uh, he's smart. We see that early on. We, we see he's intelligent, and the, the title of the film comes from him. He's the white tiger of his generation. He's the one that's going to succeed. And he's someone that, as an audience, you know he can change because you see he wants to break the system and do everything that he isn't supposed to do in this society, like breaking away from customs and his village as well. And I think he's a fairly complex character because this strive for success that we see from him and, and you know, you see that even when he is successful and has money and, and a position in power, this is almost tiny in comparison to those who probably actually have the real power in society. Um, the temptation that we see him feel as the film draws to an end, it's cleverly done, but, and this is a spoiler, I have said there's going to be spoilers, I'm not sure having him, I guess he's a, uh, he's a murderer. He is a murderer. Um, I don't know if that's the best way to role model success in overcoming the odds so a little bit of an iffy um sort of uh it's a twist i guess towards the end of the film um the other main characters we'll talk about ashok and pinky they're the the two people that um balram becomes a driver for so ashok he's a part of this uh well-off family i guess and he's sort of broken away from his family a little bit to marry pinky um, and, and that's out of this caste system that we see. So he's he's not doing what his family want. His family look down on her and, and almost tell him all the time, you know, you've got to keep her under control. The, I guess the, the comparison is that he seems to want a different India. However, when he is around his own family and he's not around Pinky, he quickly jumps back into this dominating have of society almost and and his partner Pinky, she's the opposite of that, I guess. She's grown up in America, so she knows a different way of life. And she doesn't like the way that Ashok acts around his family either or the way that they treat people. She's she's obviously more liberal-minded and happy to have her say and, and stand up to the men in the film and stand up to these outdated ways of society that she sees compared to what she's had in America. And I guess you could almost call her the, the moral conscious of the film. Uh, the only other people, like, obviously, um, Balram has a whole family back in his village, his grandma who sort of supported him, his, his brother's there as well. We see his father's passed away. There's no real mention of his mother too, but the other, I guess the, the cross between him getting this job for Ashok and Pinky as their driver is that he sees that Mongoose, um, who's Ashok's brother, uh, comes to the village with their father, Stork, as well. And, and Ashok, I guess, he's the complete opposite. Sorry, Ashok, yeah. Ashok is the complete opposite to his brother, the Mongoose, because the Mongoose, he knows he's in the upper class of society and he can treat others poorly and always feel good about himself, which reflects the father as well. They're, they're both very different characters. Um, and, and the issue, I guess, is that they almost own Balram's home village and, and we know that his father and his granny and all those people, they're always in debt to him, which is sad. It means they can never escape and, and it's a very blatant, um, obvious, explicit theme, that idea of a chook in a, in a hen or a cage, and that's what they are. Um, the director, Raman Barani, uh, I hadn't heard of him as a director before. He's, he's an Iranian-American director. He's got 29 producer credits, 22 directing credits, done a few pieces. Obviously, the only film that he's directed that I knew of was the film um, Fahrenheit 451, which stars the guy from uh, Creed, uh, Michael Michael B. Jordan. Uh, so it stars him. So that that's the only film that of his that I knew of. But I think I'm probably keen to check out some of his other work. All right, this is, this is where we talk about some of the scenes. What are some scenes that stood out in this one? What are some scenes that I didn't necessarily enjoy? I think that there's a lot that, that's really good and, and it's all very subtle. So th there's these continual flashes throughout the film of 
of death and what could happen to Balram's family if he betrayed those who he serves. And I think that's a good reminder throughout of how he was thinking and what he was thinking of that, you know, he wanted to break free, but if he broke free, the consequences this would have on his family. I like that. I think I also liked, um, there's a scene where Pinky and Ashok, they, they call Balram into their room and sort of ask him if he knows what the internet is. What a simple sort of question for, for, for modern society. And he just lies through his teeth to try and prove his worth, like saying, you know, I will, I'll go to the shops and get the internet for you. And they, they're sort of like, oh, he's got no idea. And then, you know, they're like, have you seen a computer? And he's like, yeah, I've got them all with my goats at home. Like, it was just sad to see that's where some people are at, to just try and impress all the time, to better themselves. Um, There's a scene where Balram, he uses the bathroom um, and... <laughs> And he, there's this toilet spray almost in the in the bathroom that he uses to freshen himself up. And he sort of looks at the price on it and he's like shocked. And it's just like, that's not even something nice to spray on yourself. That was sad too. Um, and a little bit funny. I think there's a scene where Balram, they, you know, he drives to the city with a shock and pinky. And, and he sees these big buildings and he's amazed and he, at the views. And he's just looking at these huge skyscrapers and he's counting the floors on the building. And they go back to that a lot. It's just a really good identification of the clash of cultures. Uh, there's a scene with the sadness i guess the real sadness of, of balram who's having to learn how to brush his teeth how to dress properly how to go and buy shoes and a suit and that idea that he's reflecting that you know his animal his parents bought him up almost like he was an animal and he doesn't understand this other part of the world there's a scene where they force balram to sign this contract for the car accident and i felt like so sad and disrespectful because as an audience and ashok as well he knows that he can read and that he can write and we see early on as an audience how good he did at school so you know that idea that he's not thinking properly when he signs and he he had options to tell the truth or run away but he doesn't actually act on these that's that's another sad moment too and and the final thing Balram there's a scene where he goes to the markets he signed this contract and he's worried he goes to the markets there's all these cool shots of the culture of the markets of the streets of the people of the food of the the stalls there's monkeys like just that whole thing that just looks so good the 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 final part of that scene he sort of loses it at a beggar and i wasn't a big fan of that but the rest of that scene was, was really good looking um what didn't i like in this film there's there's a, there's a scene um where balram there's, there's he's often left with drivers of other sort of rich people underneath the, the apartment block and there's a scene where uh they're all outside the front and they're sort of ogling these females that go past it was a little bit gross and it also adds to that constant um i guess putting down that he received from these other drivers because of who he was and and how he acted and and then he makes a comment about these girls and he's like oh you know i didn't realize that ladies don't have hair on their legs or under their arms and they all make fun of him i don't know it just didn't work for me and, and the only other thing there's a scene where a shock's sort of drunk and he goes down under the underground to sort of lie or sit on balram's bed and he sort of sings and um Balram sings as well. It just didn't work for me. But but apart from that, very solid film. Uh, themes, ideas. What's this film trying to say? Like, there's lots that's trying to say that. The big theme in this film is about that idea of of masters and servants in, in Indian society and, and the relationship between the two, those stark contrasts between the rich and the poor and that divide too between class and caste issues. Like, the, the poor have no choices in life. It's like that idea I said before a bit a bit about being stuck in a, a rooster's coop. Like how hard is it to get freedom in India? Because the poor people of society, they don't have opportunities. So, you know, and it's hard, like violence and things like that, not necessarily a good way to say to break free, which the film does show at times, but but that makes the complexity of of um of Balram's character all that more important I guess um there's a lot about corruption and, and crime in politics and that idea of betrayal too but, but almost overcoming all of these and, and using your intelligence and your mindset because democracy in this version of it is it's not working um especially in India through this film the other thing like culture plays a big part especially family values that idea of having to to send money to support a family of it but then that clash too that that the unfortunate side of arranged marriages to better your family, that idea of no choice and, and also tying in religion and faith and prayer that that's very important. And I guess that start, the film starts off with that idea of, of India and China. The, the film is a, is a reach out to the Chinese premier or, or um, president or who, whatever he is. And, and that idea of Brown and yellow people, like the future, the future of the world. And I think the quote was like, you know, America is so yesterday. Like these are the two, like two of the most, I know Indonesia as well, but two of the most populous nations in the world. Um, and they have such poverty. It's, it's such a sad thing to see. Uh, what did I take away from this film? I, <laughs> 
the soundtrack was good there was there was like a jay-z sort of song at the start the 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 one that stood out for me there's there's a gorilla song feel good ink by the gorillas which made this appearance I, I love the gorillas i thought that was a really good um sort of inclusion and the cinematography in this film too like of everyday india throughout it's like mesmerizing almost it, it, it looks so good so that's a big tick of approval for me uh questions ponderings ideas thoughts on this film a few sort of things i think you know a lot of sadness <laughs> for me it's a lot of sadness in this film the, the sadness that people in india would think that they can understand who the best master for themselves would be like we we, we see this scene where where balram's like i know i, I see uh, shook and i'm like yep he'd be a great master that's so sad um and and balram is a character too like very i'm very confused with him as a character and i that you're meant to feel that way like they want you to cheer for him. You, they want you to support him and be like, this guy's overcoming the odds. But he's almost just as bad as all the others who have had power before him in this film. Like, you know, he stops sending money home early, even though he promises he will. So he breaks his promises, you know. But he does want to get his family out of the situation too. And, you know, he, he does these ploys throughout of getting rid of the driver number one to up himself by threatening to reveal his religion like morally that's a really bad thing to do and and constantly has these thoughts of of stealing and, and eventually ripping off his boss to to earn more money like it's almost like there's no guilt it's just this idea of rage which he mentions as well um and the part of the society too that that idea of these you know they talk about how many thousands of castes of, of uh, there are in india or they have been and, and they break it down to like there's really only two there's those with the big belly and the small belly and it's like that idea of you either eat or you get eaten and and that's so sad that that's that's how you have to live uh, and, and balram at one stage he sort of says you know to, this is um he's got um He's driving, I guess, and they, they go for a walk. He goes for a walk with a shook in this field, and he's like, let's get in the car and let's drive to Bangalore, and you can make change, I can make change with you. And through the narration, he sort of says, like, along the lines that, you know, it would have been different if he left me. Like, really? Would it? Would would things have changed, or would he have just as got as frustrated in a different location with him? Because I feel like that would have been the case. There, there's also that idea of, of recognizing beauty in the world, and... And that is when you stop being a slave, when you can understand how the world operates. I, I like that too. Finally, like that idea of Balram thinking of Ashok as an ex-partner almost and missing him at the end, even after he's murdered him. Like, it's an interesting take. Like, um, that's how fe close he felt to him and how I guess he felt he helped him progress in society too. All right, we're ready to wrap this one up. We, gi we give the films a rating out of five on the show. For me, like... You know, you could almost do a double feature of this with um, the Academy Award winning Best Picture Parasite. Like, very similar themes, um, you know, the Asian culture. I, I think it would work well, but obviously Parasite is probably the better film. But this film, it, you know, it's well put together. It's got a lot to say about the struggles of, of lower class society, and it's definitely worth a watch if you haven't seen it yet. So I'm giving this a four out of five. We're on socials. We've got Instagram. We've got Facebook. And we have X, formerly known as Twitter. The question I wanted to put out there, this is just in relation to... The, I guess the haves and the have nots like when when did you first access the internet like it's a it's a good question like when you think about because that's really changed everyone's lives i i remember like my auntie had the internet and i'd go to her house and i felt so cool being able to use the internet you know you, she'd have to unplug her phone and you'd plug it into the computer and i think it was at the stage where i was like really liked pokemon <laughs> so it was like you know it'd take 10 minutes to load a picture of a different pokemon and be like oh i've never seen this pokemon before <laughs> like such a weird story but like the internet it's it's changed our lives um what are your thoughts when you know when do you remember being first able to use the internet it's such an interesting question now anyway we're back next week next week we do have another international film from 2021 this one's an indonesian film and it's a family comedy called june and kopi this one's directed by nivin novindra Santosa and stars Archer, Septriasa, Ryan Delon, and Michaela Rose Hill. So if you're interested in that one, give it a watch before next week and you can join us then for the conversation. As always, uh, thanks for listening to me blab on a while about this one. I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, give us some feedback if you can. I'll see you next week.